Dr. Ricky here. And first things first, I'm going to thank my dad, the bull, for preparing the soil and making the hole for me. That was really good, nice of him, and I thank him for that. Made it made this job a lot easier. So, now right here, we have my cherry tree. Now this isn't just any normal cherry tree. As you see right here, is a sweet royal Anne cherry tree. Now, sweet royal Anne cherry tree is very, very good for many different reasons. But first, we're going to get this out of this little bag right here. Grab it. Grab it. I'm just going to take off this bag really quickly. Alright guys, you have to admit, I did not mean to cut the bag there. I was actually supposed to cut it in the hole because when I did it over there all the contents fell out and I had to kind of scoop most of it up back into the hole. Or if I were to do it inside the hole then it would end up being the same. It was supposed to be here. But anyway, I finished tearing up the bag in the hole like I was supposed to. Now I can get this off of the tree. Oops. Make sure we get all the soil out of the bag. There you go. Now that we have the soil prepared, all we have to do is just get the, the hole back together. But first, I'm going to talk to you about my Royal Anne Cherry Tree. You see, the Sweet Royal Anne Cherry Tree isn't like most cherry trees. It's actually different. Instead of just producing its own kind, it actually produces many kinds of cherry trees. Cherries. For, instance, for example, you could have one Royal Anne Cherry, and then you could have like a sweet, a red cherry under it. All different kinds of cherries. Not all of them. But there's most kinds of cherries that could be growing on the street, which means if you get it, you can get a variety of trees. But, if this plant, even though it produces all different kinds of cherries, and it is a cherry tree, it still cannot self-pollinate itself. You're going to have to get another one so that they can cross-pollinate each other, therefore they can produce their flowers. But, and another example is, these trees can actually produce a lot of fruit at a very young age. So once we get the cross-pollination happening, it won't even be a really grown, grown full tree yet. We'll already start getting our little puds and buds and getting our cherries. And that's what I like, quick and easy. As we see, the bull is sprinkling ash into the soil. As you know, ash is really good for plants to put their roots in because the plants actually thrive off of it. That's why a forest fire is really devastating. But once they have all the ash, it helps the plants to regrow. All right, I just I just added some ash to the soil. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this uh, fertilizer. It's for fruit trees and nut trees. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead. This is a uh, five five two. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this to the soil. tree hopping and popping. All right, now that the tree has got all his nutrients, we're gonna go ahead and get this, get this uh, cherry tree in the ground. So, I'm gonna thank 
responsible for putting in the wood chips. She also did a good job of making sure it's eight inches away from the trunk so we don't have fungus. But other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys for watching so much. You guys mean so much to us. We're so happy to watch our channel. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And see you later.